Rock 108 on the phone with Vaden Todd Lewis, the front man of the band, the Toadies. How you doing today, brother? Doing great, man. Awesome, man. Now, you have to forgive me a little bit. I got some, uh, got some of these West Texas allergies going on today, so if I start sniffling and everything like that, I'm not crying or nothing like that, all right? <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> man, well, let's, uh, let's just dive right on in, man. You know, uh, last year, uh, about July, you had an album come out called Play Rock Music, and uh, originally uh, you guys were going to do that as an EP, but uh, decided to make it a full length. Uh, uh, why did you guys decide to do that, man? Uh, well, honestly, we the, the, the original plan was just to go in the studio and work with this producer that we had been wanting to work with and uh, just write some songs in the studio. Uh, and usually we, I have the songs pretty much done by the time we go in the studio with a few exceptions. And then we go in and kind of finalize everything in the studio. But I just wanted to go in with some ideas and write on the fly. And that started going so well that we changed it from being an EP to being a... Uh, I'm sorry, from being a demo to being an EP, and uh, then I just it just kept rolling. So we just kept kept writing and uh, decided to do it fully. That's cool, man. I mean, you, you see, you got the momentum. You might as well keep it going, you know. Yeah, sure. Now the album cover cracks me up every time I see it, man. I mean, who came up with the idea with the dolls on the front of the album cover? Uh, that was kind of a collaborative thing. Mostly with our our graphics guy Tommy. He's 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 got a really great wit and. Uh, you know, we wanted something that was as unrock and roll as you could possibly <laughs> imagine. I get it now. The irony there—it's uh, <laughs> kind of the, that's that's pretty funny, man. Now you seem to incorporate a lot of uh, a lot of comedy and a lot of things that you guys do. Now, where does that inspiration come from? Oh, uh, just being a wise ass, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We, I mean, we we crack each other up all the time. So I don't know. I. I I, I never wanted to be a, a, a band that takes ourselves too seriously, you know, that's the name of the band, for crying out loud, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, I do take what I do seriously, but, but well, I'm not curing cancer, you know, it's like, right. uh, it's, uh, I'm here to entertain, and I'm here to entertain myself, and that's what I'm doing. Now, what are some of your favorite comedians out there? Uh, all-time favorite would have to be probably Steve Martin. And he, he's like, hilarious, man. The Jerk, my favorite all-time right there. Oh yeah, when I was a kid, uh, like, like w- way too young to be able to order stuff and pay for it. Which I don't know what I paid for it with, but uh, <laughs> uh, I would order these tapes and I would just find every Steve Martin tape I could. And, and my, you know, my parents just way against the rules for me to have that stuff. So I would put my uh, earbud in with my cassette player and sit in my room at night and just crack up listening to Steve and memorize all his routines. Uh, yeah, it was years later that I would see like the, the actual video tape of that performance and see the, the physical humor going on. And, oh, I get it now. Right, right. But, uh, yeah. He is hilarious, man. Well, uh, let's get back to uh, the Toadies here. One of the songs on the album was, uh, was a, um, a song that you guys covered, uh, Reverend Horton Heat, uh, 400 bucks. Uh, first of all, I got to tell you, man, I dig the hell out of uh, RHH, man. I saw him at Deep Elm a few years ago, and I uh, was just totally hooked, man. But uh, what made you cover that particular song, man? Oh, we've been playing that one for years, actually. We, we just kind of busted that out. We were on tour with them forever ago and uh, worked it up shortly thereafter. And then uh, we just kind of pull it out every now and again. And uh, um, I think it's, it was for iTunes. They wanted a bonus track. The iTunes always wants an exclusive, you know, so. Uh, right. So we thought, well, that's a good one. Let's just, I've always wanted to record that, so let's just knock that out. So, uh, and we, you know, we'd been playing it for so long, it was kind of a, just set up the mics and go. Now, I know you guys, as, as you mentioned just now, you know, you've, you've played with, uh, with the Reverend there, you know, several times, and it's safe to say that you guys are pretty good friends, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I can't really say that we hang out a lot because we're always on tour and missing each other, but it's like, uh, yeah, I would say we're, we're pretty tight, yeah. Cool. And there's so many different artists in the DFW area, like uh, like yourselves and Reverend Horton Heat and everything. Is there a big, you know, is there a big uh, brotherhood, as someone might think it is, in that area, even with so many bands around? I can only really speak to for Fort Worth, uh, because I've been back here for many years now. I grew up in Fort Worth and moved to Dallas for a little while and came back. But uh, uh, Fort Worth, for sure, has got a, a very much a brotherhood of, of bands, you know, the... Uh, there's a forward coalition, music coalition, that where the musicians look out for each other and make sure everybody gets, you know, doesn't get ripped off. If you get ripped off at a club, the other bands won't play there, and et cetera, et cetera. It's it's pretty, uh, pretty. We got your back. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, when I was a kid, you know, coming up, uh, the bands 
it was very cutthroat between Fort Worth and Dallas, and, and even within Fort Worth, it was kind of like, we got the gig, you guys show up and do your thing, get out, we're going to play. It's like, right. these days it seems like it's, it's very uh, organic. Now, you premiered the video to the song uh, Rattler's Revival, which is on the album uh, Play Rock Music. Uh, in fact, literally a few days ago in Dallas. How did that go? I went really well, and uh, the, in keeping with our never doing anything right, uh, <laughs> uh, we did an alternative version of that song with horns. Uh, for, uh, Black Joe Lewis and the Honey Bears, uh, I stole their horns for uh, a version of the song, and that's the version we did for the video. And we're gonna re- we released that on Record Store Day on vinyl, and we're looking at maybe releasing it uh, digitally very soon here, possibly when the video drops. Very cool. I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the video was fun, man. The, the and we did a. A rooftop, you know, video premiere at this uh, bar in, on Greenville, and I played a couple of songs on the acoustic guitar, and we watched the video, had beers, and it was, it was great, great evening. Now, when is everybody else going to be able to see this actual video? Uh, you know, honestly, we're, we just worked out the kinks today. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> there was a couple of sync issues that 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 were sneaking around, and and. And it was, we'd already set the uh, premiere party, and that's when we had the club reserved, so we went ahead and did that. But, uh, uh, yeah, it should be within a week. Cool. Now, you, uh, what is the song all about? Is it, what, is it you know, as, as common as what somebody might think, you know, Rattlers, Snakes, something like that? Or? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty pretty straightforward if, if you, uh, you know, kind of about... Um, Realizing the hangups that you have as a human being, and the, and a lot of that is, you know, in your compassion and your caring for other people. If you could just get rid of that that baggage, how much freer would you be? You know, yeah. it is is it's kind of a, just a basic caveman. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you like snakes? Or are you a fan of snakes? No, no. Be- uh, I, I, I'm, I'm indifferent unless one's in front of me, then I don't like them. Yeah, I wouldn't say I have a fear of noia or fear of them or anything like that. I just uh, it's just one of those things. I feel better when they're not around. Right on. Now you like guys- that, that quote that quote from the old movie Barfly. It's not that I hate cops. I just feel better when they're not around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you guys are playing uh, Lucky Mule uh, a week from today, as a matter of fact, uh, and it is well known that you guys put uh, one hell of a show on. I mean, you guys don't uh, you guys don't ever hold anything back. What's the process of going in? to a show as far as picking the music and you know what you want to play stage props etc well really it's just the, the set list I, I try to make a set list where where I'm going to make the band happy and me happy as well as the as, as fans um, you know I've been to shows before where the, the band played all or mostly brand new material and I'm like oh okay I get it I, I like it but I really wanted to hear the, my favorite song right and, and I don't want to be that band because I know, you know, I know what side my bread is buttered on, and I don't want to make people happy. And and I like those songs. If I hated the songs, it'd be different. But uh, uh, you know, so there'll be a good uh, a good dose of Rubberneck will be in there because I know that's what most people are familiar with. But uh, we'll play a good hunk of the new record and uh, and you know, kind of pepper in all the other ones too. There's just a ton of material out there, so there's a lot to choose from. It's kind of hard to narrow it down to you know an hour and a half. And, you know, the, the fan part of it for me, too, is that I appreciate bands that go out and play for six hours, but I, I don't want to stand there for six hours. <laughs> I just don't. I, you know, I don't know. I can't think of a I don't know. I, I'm sure there is a band that I would sit, stand there for six hours and watch, you know, play for six hours. But I, I yeah, I, I like to keep it, you know, keep people wanting more, but uh, give them enough to be satisfied. Oh. Makes sense. Well, brother, I'd, I'd actually, I'd actually sit and watch you guys play for six hours, man. Seriously, that's, uh, <laughs> that'd be. And we drink a lot of beer. And uh, you, you, you guys, uh, you got uh, the the Dia de los Toadies coming up in September. In fact, uh, you guys just released the lineup not long ago. What else is on tap for uh, the Toadies for the rest of 2013? New album, anything like that? Uh, nothing really. Honestly, we're laying pretty low. Uh, we've got big plans for next year uh, because it's the 20th anniversary of Rubberneck. So we're going to try to do. Uh, do some big stuff next year and it should be a really busy year so we're kind of laying low this year so we can spend time with our families and remember what they look like when we're gone all year next year right. but uh, uh, you know Dia de los Toadies is our main focus um, beyond uh, shooting the video and which is done now but uh, uh, that's going to be a great one we're doing it back we moved it to Fort Worth for the first time ever and uh, two days of just killer music it's going to be great Awesome, man. Well, uh, man, I, I appreciate you calling in, taking some time with us this afternoon, man. We look forward to the show, which is happening uh, this next Friday at the Lucky Mule Saloon. And uh, always a pleasure talking to you, man. 
Likewise.